which is the, the role of the uh, op uh, free and open source uh, software uh, in the digital economy. So please welcome Mario. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I'm, um, I'm thankful so that I can start uh, this uh, talk here uh, right at the beginning of the Open Tech Summit. And um, yeah, free and open source in the digital economy, um, it's a very large topic. But I want to talk a bit about what we are doing at Force Asia and at Open Tech in Germany and, and show you a bit of our projects. So um, what we are doing, um, it's these areas here. So, uh, open source, when people think about open source, they often think about uh, software. But actually today, it's more and more also hardware, um, it is data, and of course, we need to share this knowledge with each other. So it's a lot about knowledge sharing, and where does it happen at events. So we try to um, bring all this together um, in Force Asia. And uh, yeah, how do we do it? How successful are we? How we are uh, doing it? Um, yeah, works out for us so far. So we all have, for example, our GitHub repositories here, um, where we have on average every 15 minutes a merge pull request. Um, we have a lot of people on our mailing lists, and uh, it's actually developers. We focus on developers. Um, more than 4,000 people are registered in the organization. We know uh, it's always easy to create big numbers, but what we see is we also see a lot of constant activity. Sometimes people come, sometimes people go, sometimes they come back again, but we have uh, regular contributions from many people uh, who are registered. And uh, we do coding contests, like uh, more than 2,000 developers, we train them. And our goal is also to uh, work together more with people here in China, because a lot of people are from India, are from Vietnam, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, we want to do more here in China. That is also one reason why we uh, cooperate with uh, Open Fiesta and Tsinghua University here at the Open Tech Summit. So those dozens of face-to-face -face meetings, um, many meetups, and we have 100 authors of tech blog articles um, on our blog. Uh, people find it through search engines and there's a lot of traffic. So what we're doing is, what we're doing is we are making free and open source and open technologies become true. We're really doing it. And uh, here are a little bit more insights. So we started to do events already in 2009. And the first event, the first larger event that we ran was the GNOME Asia Summit. Uh, it happened in Vietnam and there was a huge success. We right away had 1,400 people. That was overwhelming and so really encouraged us to do more. Uh, we do in India, um, you know, India is very strong in software, and of course they have the advantage that they have English as a mother tongue, uh, which is always challenging for us who are not native English speakers, right? I mean, I'm German, it's close to English, relatively easy to learn, but we know like um, some people who speak Asian languages is a bit further away, so um, for Indians that is easier. And uh, we want to do more regional events, we want to do more uh, local events, so that's the next step. We have built a very active developer community, and if you check out the GitHub charts, there are many different ways to uh, check like activity on GitHub. Um, then uh, we are one of the top organizations. Okay, let me try this other microphone here. So. Force Asia is currently number 14 on GitHub in regards to followers and um, activity. Um, so you can check this out on uh, organization rankings. So we're here, number 14. And uh, further up, of course, number one is Google, Facebook, Microsoft. Um, but we're not so far away. And this is pretty amazing for a community organization. Um, it's still a company. Force Asia is a company registered as a company in Singapore. But it's more like a company born out of the community. So community is the main thing, and the company helps to um, develop uh, like products that support uh, the community and that generate income for developers. So we are working on more quality software now. Um, we have large numbers, we have a lot of people, but we also need to do more quality, because a lot of people in the community, they come and their main goal is to learn something. And we're doing very well here. 
but we want to do more also actually in regards to developing products that many people can use. So, and as I mentioned earlier, it's not just software today, it's hardware and, and yeah, Shenzhen is a great place to be uh, for hardware. Um, we have built the product expertise and uh, it's not always only about um, making a software or making a hardware, right? You can always have it on the GitHub repository, uh, it, but it's really difficult actually then to produce it and to bring it to market. It's nearly as much work, some people say it's even more work than just developing the hardware. So we have developed this expertise, we know how to work together. Of course, we have an advantage that, uh, for example, a lot of our people in Singapore, they speak Chinese, they can work with Chinese manufacturers much easier. So that's our idea now, that we want to do more and more hardware here in Shenzhen, for example. So one of the projects we do in hardware is here, the Pocket Science Lab. Uh, want to give it a round. Yeah. Please, please pass it around. The Pocket Science Lab is an instrument to measure all kinds of things and um, there's a QR code. I have, we have to get it on the Chinese app stores. This is actually the QR code for the uh, Google Play Store. But uh, we have to work together here to also get it to the Chinese stores. So it's a, you can have an oscilloscope, you have a multimeter, it's all on the Android app and we also have a desktop app. And you can try it out. So here are a few ideas. Um, logic analyzer, wave generator, power source, accelerometer, and we're constantly adding more and more instruments uh, to this hardware and like implemented in the firmware, implementing in the software, and also like enhancing the hardware in uh, follow-up versions. So we learned how to produce a device and actually we are selling this in Japan. Um, have, have you heard, of, uh, our Japanese friends, have you heard about the Pocket Science Lab in Japan already? Did you know? Have you heard about it? Because in Japan it's very popular. Um, they have a lot of uh, hardware geeks in Japan uh, and we are listed on Switch Science. Takasu Masukasu, uh, he's often here in Shenzhen also, maybe some of you know him. So he's helping a lot with bringing this uh, to the community. And the next device that we want to do now, based on this experience, is the NeuroLab device. So it's a device to do measurements of the brain waves. And uh, there are a few devices out there, but I think we can go much lower in price and enable a much larger community to do uh, neuro um, yeah, projects. So how do we do this? As I said, we are small. We are not Google, we are not Microsoft and we still are able to grow a big community and to have a lot of developers that collaborate with us. So we developed a list of best practices and here are just a few. So we have very simple rules and these rules, we communicate them to new developers um, with our best practices here. And for example, one simple rule is match one issue on the issue tracker with one pull request. Yeah. Sounds very simple, sounds very easy for somebody who has been a developer for many years, but for newbies, aha, uh -huh, okay, because they try to do maybe sometimes just a part, or they work like three weeks on one issue, and that will be like a huge pull request if they then combine several issues even. So yeah, it will take a very long time to review them, and I could go into detail, but I just want to mention this here now. So uh, best practices, maybe we can talk about this also here during the event. So, what we are working on now is then also more long-term partnerships by sharing resources with developers. So we see, for example, that we have the developers and they follow the best practices, they uh, participate in one of our coding programs, and then uh, they move on. They move on pretty quickly. We have a lot of people now who work for Google, work for uh, Facebook, um, all the big companies, Uber and so on, we have a lot of people uh, who were previously here in the projects. But what we see unfortunately is that then the engagement drops. As soon as somebody joins a big company, they don't contribute as much as before, some people stop entirely. This is sometimes even the case because of uh, the contracts they get. They're not even permitted always. They're not allowed to share 
uh, their knowledge and to participate in the community. And that's said. So what we want to do is we want to change that. We want to work, of course, together with companies and teach them about the value of participating in the community. And uh, for example, they could hire new people from the community. So that's a possibility. But also like they could participate and collaborate with us on projects. And this is, of course, the goal here. For example, we have the hardware project with the processor. Uh, we, we talked about yesterday already a bit about how we can collaborate and how we can also uh, work with uh, other companies. So that's our goal. Let's see what we can do. And it's not just about that everyone wants to be employed by companies. Some people also want to have a startup. So do we have any startups here in the audience? Yeah, Who's working in a startup or with startups? Yeah, a few hands going up. Yeah. So, Right? People want to grow their own projects. They don't just want to be hired by somebody. They, they want to go home and you know their parents say, wow, yes, that was cool, I heard this is a great thing, and you know, get this acknowledgement and of course earn an income for their family and for their peers. So what we're trying to do now is we incubate projects. I mentioned Pocket Science Lab. So Pocket Science Lab is now a self-sustaining project. It already earns enough money to pay developers to develop the next version. And that's pretty cool. This one we did without venture capital, so it's all entirely self-funded. And one reason is also, to be honest, it's sometimes difficult to get VC. Because a VC has this mindset of, I invest in 10 projects, and one of these projects has to make this much money that even the other projects fail, has to make a lot of money to pay off for all these projects. Whereas our goal is more like to build a sustainable ecosystem and companies and projects that continue to develop and when more and more new products come out, products that help humanity, products that maybe solve the climate challenge here, the, the climate change. Yeah, I couldn't imagine a lot of things. We have so many problems in this world. I think we shouldn't just leave it to big money. We need to build sustainable projects that help people. So what we will do is we make more projects ready for end users. For example, here, Suzy AI. It's a project with already more than 300 contributors. Um, I don't know, like, who, who knows Star Trek here? I don't know how, how well known it is in China, yeah? Who knows Star Trek, yeah? Okay. I don't see that many hands going up. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting, I'm becoming, yeah, a little bit of an older generation, it seems. So uh, it, it used to be a very cool project. Uh, very cool movies and, and, and series. Uh, for example, here from 1986, um, from a movie, this scene is quite famous, where uh, Scotty, the engineer, travels back from the future to the past. So from the future. And then well, he is very confused because he tries to communicate with the computer. And the computer doesn't answer. He says, hello, 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 computer. Yeah? And the computer doesn't answer. So what he does is he takes a mouse and he talks into the mouse. So already in '86, the directors of this movie had this idea that in future everyone will talk with the computer. There are many other movies where we see this idea. So this idea is already prevalent in um, yeah in the mind of many people. And we have today, of course. Um, Google Home and um, Alexa Echo and Xiao I Tong Chi, Xiao I Tong Chi. I always get the tones wrong, I'm sorry. But you know what I mean? So, from, from different uh, uh, producers. And I think we need an open source alternative that is, for example, respecting our privacy. So, we developed Suzy AI and it runs on many devices. And uh, we have a very basic prototype. Um, I know there are many people here in the room who do hardware, they will say, oh, that's not so impressive, because our focus is here the software. So we just uh, try to make SUSE AI uh, running on standard hardware. Yeah? So Raspberry Pi, for example, standard computers. So we make this prototype, which is basically just to test the software. But it runs already on many devices. So apart from the smart speaker that I just gave around, it runs on Android, it runs on iOS, and on the smart speaker itself, 
Um, here's how we make it. And we have a content management system where you can upload skills. Many different topics already. I have to say you can actually go to suzy.ai and try it out, but don't expect this to work every day in like a fully fledged way, just like Google Home or so. This project is under heavy development and we deploy live to GitHub, so it's always the latest development version and we're constantly fixing things. So this is not really a project that is run as a commercial project yet, but people can try it out, can see what's the current state, what's happening today, so they can go to Suzy AI. So, um, and we said like, uh, should be easy to 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 be um, yeah to put it together. So we make videos online, information, um, and it should have more features than like let's say Google Home and Alexa Echo, for example. They don't run on the web. Yeah, they don't run on the web. In the future, if you talk to a computer and then you talk to Google, actually it goes through Google or it goes through Baidu or it goes through any of these big providers and they then find the information for you. Well, how we do the internet today is we open a browser and we go ourselves to a web service. But in future, we go to these big providers and they decide what we can see. And they decide, oh no, this, this pizza service is not good. This pizza service we don't support. We support the other pizza service or something like that. Like you should be able to choose for yourself even like a simple thing like a pizza. Uh, right. so, so we have it on the web. And we have, for example, here uh, the way to play video on Yoku or on, uh, yeah, YouTube. That's all possible already on the web version. And we say, why does it take so long? Why is it so difficult to make skills? Has anyone yet tried to make a skill on action? Like uh, uh, Huawei, for example, uses Alexa. So it's possible here in China to make uh, skills for Alexa. Has anyone tried yet to do that? Now, not even a single person, wow. Oh, you guys have to get into this. When we are um, in Europe, sometimes 50% of people raise their hands. So um, that is something I think we can work together on here in China. And, uh, or maybe for, what's that called for Xiao Ai, uh, Xiao Tongqiu? Can you actually make skills for Xiao Ai Tongqiu already? Has anyone tried? Not for Xiaomi, for the Xiaomi speaker. Anyone tried? You, you tried? Yeah, you tried? And easy, difficult? Difficult? Do you have to deploy your own server or, or not? You have to deploy on, on the infrastructure, probably a lot of steps, yeah? Is it's easy? But you are a uh, like <laughs> good developer. <laughs> so, right? I mean, is it as easy to, as making an Android app, for example, yeah, or a WeChat app? something like that. So I think that's something we can talk about more um, during the event. I would love to learn more about this, uh, how's the state here. So we developed the language of thought. We said it should be as easy as editing an article on a wiki. Yeah, It's very simple wiki language. That's how we should uh, uh, be able to do it. And uh, yeah, that's what we do. And so how do we get together now? This is uh, the question. So. We have many events, for example here, you see the Science Hack Day, where we exchange uh, about all these topics uh, that I just introduced. And uh, we run coding programs. So I, I hope we could run more coding programs maybe here in China also with Punchang Lab. So what we do is um, with India, for example, we run the coding program there, and then the top contributors in the coding contest that we run here, the coding contest, they will receive a prize and then they will fly to the First Asia Summit in Singapore. Maybe we could do that here in future in China. Yeah, that the top contributors win a prize to come to Shenzhen or come to Beijing and meet up with other developers, something like that. And we will do more of this, of course. And we'll also do uh, here the First Asia Academy that we started in Singapore. It's um, uh, providing uh, yeah, government certified courses, and of course we focus on free and open source only. So Marco, uh, one of our leaders here in the community, he was here in Shenzhen, for example, did some workshops. I think like uh, some people participated, right? I mean, something this Python robotics workshop. Who, who 
was who was there, right? I think you were also in the robotics workshop with Marco. Yeah, right, yes, yes, I remember. Okay. So I'm at the end, and I have to say open technology is here. We have many open tech events. And uh, what we also realized uh, just in the last few weeks of the event, that for example, tomorrow there's also an Apache event. And then there's also a Hackaday event, also about open source. And uh, Lee Chi said, oh, so many competing events. But I think it's really positive. We have so much open source, so, so, many, so much sharing going on here. And that's cool. And we want to be a driving force with Force Asia here and do more about this. So let's make open tech, around, uh, open tech around the world a reality. That's our goal. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks a lot, Maru. Uh, so uh, maybe it's a little running a little bit late, so we will pass the question. Like, uh, if you have any question, you can always like uh, join us in the afternoon and like, tomorrow. More of the ways, Mario. What do you think? Maybe, uh, yeah. And uh, so thanks again, Mario, for the introduction.